Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the uh, CSES uh, problem set question, sticks length. Alright, so in this question we're going to be given n sticks and these n sticks have some length. And the task is to modify the sticks so that each stick has the same length at the ending. So that now the way we modify these sticks is by either lengthening or shortening each strip, uh, sorry, stick. So each of these operations is going to have a cost of x. So the way we find this cost is let's say we had a stick of length 5 and we shortened it to a length of 4. So now the cost is going to be the difference between that, which is 1. And likewise, let's say we had a stick of length 1 and we increased the length to a length of 3. Then again, the cost would be the difference, which in this case is 2. So essentially, we want to alter the stick's lengths in this way so that they all have the same size at the ending. And we want to find out what is the minimal cost or minimum total cost it requires to actually do so. So let's actually take a quick look at an example to better understand this. So let's say we have this uh, outputs of 2, 3, 1, 5, and 2. So real quickly, I'll just start off with some um, random values. So let's say we want a target, right? So now what exactly is this target going to be? So this target is going to be that final number of length, right? So this is going to be the final length that all sticks are going to have. So obviously, they're not going to have a length of uh, zero. Uh, so we're going to start off with a length of one. So over here, the assumption we're making is that every stick has a length of one. So now let's calculate the cost. So now the first stick would be decreased by one. So that would be a cost of one. The second stick would be decreased by two. So cost of two. And then likewise, so the third stick would not have any change. So that's a zero cost. Now this stick would have to be decreased by four. And finally, we would have to decrease this one by one, right? So this over here is going to give us a total cost of eight, right? So we have four, six, seven, eight. So this is how, this is kind of a brute force way we can do it. So we can keep looking at several targets until we find a final answer. So what I'm going to do just to kind of show you is I'm just going to write down the, uh, some other targets and the cost just so you can see how it looks like. All right, cool. So over here, I tried out some targets. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And over here, you can see the final cost that it takes given these targets, right? So essentially, we have uh, at one, we have eight. At two, we have four, six, nine, twelve, and so on. So now, obviously, our answer, just based on this brute force approach, is going to be the target two. So a simple way to actually identify what target is going to give us a minimal cost is we can iterate through all the possible targets. In this case, uh, we did from one to five and look for a number which is smaller than both of its neighbors. So in basic words, four is less than eight and it's less than six. So it's kind of like a minimum point. And after this, the cost only goes up and up. So six, nine, 12, and it's only gonna keep going higher, right? And same way, if you go lower than uh, one, so I know it's not possible, but just for the sake of it, let's say we have zero, negative one, so on and so forth, it would only go lower and lower. So essentially, uh, four is a point where it kind of dips and then it goes back. So you're kind of looking for that dipping point. So this is one way you could do it. But obviously, the main problem with this is that the, you could have up to two to the power of ten, sorry, ten to the power of five sticks. And in other words, uh, they could have a length of up to ten to the power of nine. So this is not the best approach, especially since it is very brute force. So now let's actually move on to a next approach. So in this case, uh, what we could actually do is remember what our goal is. So our goal is to find the minimal cost, but we can actually look at this in another way. So we want to essentially find out what is the best target. So that is really what we're looking for. So what is the best target? that we can have. That is what we really are searching for. And if we're able to find that best target, we can find out what this, uh, what the minimal cost is actually going to be. But now, how exactly can we find this out? So I think one basic observation we can make is our best target is going to be whatever is close to the center of this distribution. So just for the sake of it, I'm just going to write this in ascending order so it's just easier to look at. So one, two, two, three, and five. So essentially, we're looking for a number that represents or shows the center of this distrib distribution or the set of numbers. So essentially, we want to find a measure of central tendency. Now, there's three basic ways or the most popular ways to do this. And what I want to do is show you all three of them and kind of uh, based on this, come up with a final answer. So we have the mean, 
median, and mode. So mean is essentially the average. Median is the middle number of a sorted list. In this case, that would be two, right? And the mode is the number which has the most repetition. So I'm going to try to go through each of them and come up with what is going to be the best one for us. Okay, so first let's actually just take a look at the mode and why this is actually not a, a good solution. So now the mode actually depends on the frequency of a number. So just for the sake of it, let's just say, uh, you know, kind of uh, online with the same example. Let's just say we have two hundreds, right? So in this case, we obviously, obviously choose the central number to be the number that is the most frequent. And the reason this is wrong, so even in this uh, solution, the actual target would actually be 100 based on taking the mode. But that's wrong because essentially when you take the mode, you only give priority to what has the most frequency. So that could be a really high number or a really low number as well. It does not have to be the correct answer. But in this case, for example, the two twos in this case actually are the mode and that is the correct answer. But that is just one case, right? So now over here, for example, 100 is not going to be the answer. So instead, the answer would actually be 3. You could check that. But yeah, so the basic idea is the mode tends uh, towards the highest frequency. And that is not exactly what determines the central value for us. So we're going to get rid of the mode for this. So now the other two. So now these two values might be slightly confusing in this case. So what I'm going to do is real quickly take, a, you know, find the two values for this um, example over here. So the median over here is 2. Okay, so now for the mean over here, uh, we're going to have, so let's add them up. So that will be 3, 2, 5, 10, 12, 13. And we have five numbers. So 13 by 5 is around 2.6. So now in this case as well, the, the mean and mode are very close to each other. But now I just want to show you an example where that is not the case. Now the basic idea is the mean is not robust to the data sets we have. In other words, what that means is when you give it an outlier, it is going to tend or move towards that outlier, right? Uh, and it's going to give it more weightage essentially. So let's just actually take this example, two, two, three, and instead of five, let's say we have a hundred, right? So now let's do the same measurements. So now in this case, like I said, the median does not matter much about, so the outliers don't really affect the median. It's more robust of a measure of central tendency. So in this case, the median is still two, even though we have the outlier 100. And now the mean is going to change completely. So now the mean is going to be three, two, five, seven, eight. So that's 108 divided by five. And that is actually going to give you 21. 0.6. So now this is a huge deviation. So what exactly is the correct answer? So real quickly, uh, we could actually, so the answer would actually be two, but let's just take a look at it uh, by just actually inputting the numbers. So with a target of 21, so you could do the math and you would actually get a cost of 155. But now with a target of two, you would end up with a cost of 100. So now in this case, the median is what actually gives us the best answer. So essentially, our target is always going to be equal to whatever the median is. And based on that, we're going to find the cost because we know the best target is the median. So just to further elaborate on this, the mean is very sensitive to any sort of outliers. So in this case as well, we tend towards that 100. But when we're doing that, we're actually getting farther away from all of these values over here, just for this fact that we're getting closer to the 100. So while we are decreasing the cost from the target to the 100, we're increasing the cost of all of these, right? So now, but when we take the median, which is going to the center when you sort out the numbers, that's basically telling you that this number is closest to most of the numbers. And that's basically because since it is the center, we don't have to move too much around it. But in the mean, we could have conditions where we tend towards the outliers, where we, would, where we would have to move some of these values a lot more than intended. So that's going to be our solution to this problem. We find the median by sorting the list, and then based on that, we calculate the cost. So let's just take a look at the code for it, which should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so essentially, first over here, we're taking the input, and we're storing it inside of a vector. And then we're sorting it um, in ascending order, obviously. And then we want to find out what our target is. 
So the target is going to be whatever is the median, right? And we get that by going to the middle index, essentially. So then now that we've found whatever our target is, what we do is we find the cost. So the cost is going to be the target minus whatever element is over there. We take the absolute value of that. And we're going to add that to a counter called result. And result is going to start off with a value of zero. So at the ending, we're going to have all of the costs. And that's what we're going to end up outputting for our answer. And that's it. So thanks a lot for watching. And hopefully this video did help you out. Thank you.